this has been uh, one of the most horrific uh, hate crimes we've had in Puerto Rico and uh, it has shaken the conscience of not only uh, the LGBT community or the trans community, it has shaken the conscience of all of Puerto Rico and even outside of Puerto Rico because it was so brutal and it was filmed and she was uh, chased and hunted uh, and just because she went to a bathroom it's a, a basic necessity that all of us have and and um, it, it, it's one of those turning points in the history of Puerto Rico where we finally can see transphobia and uh, show its ugly fa uh, face and its ugly head and, and it, it shows you that it's real, that the stories that we've been hearing about discrimination and bullying and harassment and violence against trans people it's 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 very very real and it, it costs lives and it's all the it's like the it's like the culmination of all this hateful rhetoric that has been is, is said over and over again by religious and political fundamentalist leaders that they were saying that someone that is trans and goes to the bathroom are perverts and then people Regular people saw a trans person go into a bathroom, which was Alexa, and they called the police on her for just going to the bathroom. So it's like uh, making real what you have been uh, saying for all these years and, and trying to de 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 demonize and dehumanize trans people. So finally it happened. So, so we saw that because we've had transgender uh, people killed before, but this one, so it, it was, broadcast in this way that it made it very real for people. What effect is the religious community having on the, you know, um, many member, um, uh, many members of the religious community are in the party in power, in the legislature. Um, what are they saying and how is that affecting things? Well, they, they are the ones that are saying this hateful rhetoric, this, this rhetoric that is inciting violence and intolerance against trans people. What are they saying? They are saying that, that trans people are perverts because they just want to go to the bathroom because uh, they don't want to accept that a trans woman is a woman and that she can go to the woman's bathroom. And they, and they are trying to portray uh, trans people as they're, they're dehumanized or they are like demonized, you know? So, and they are also uh, saying that we shouldn't have the, the same rights. They're trying to, right now, the, with the political uh, leaders who are fundamentalists and religious, they are trying to take away the right of trans people to get their uh, birth certificate uh, corrected with the gender marker with, that they live with. And, and that's uh, putting them in danger again and in a, in, a, in, a, in a point that they can be discriminated against. And not only that, but they, they have tried twice, this legislature has tried twice to have a religious uh, freedom bill that would uh, effectively uh, legalize discrimination against LGBTQ people. And they have also, they didn't uh, want to pass a law to ban conversion therapy in Puerto Rico. And uh, they have, uh, over and over again, they have tried to pull back the rights that we have won. And, you know, and, and it makes Puerto Rico more, far more advanced than many states and than other territories in, in, in the US and even the world. So they are trying to, to take us back. They want to, like, like with the hate crime, they're trying to put us again back in our place, you know, because they think that we are less than. And we are not, we are equal then. And we need, we need to stop this. Uh, this is violence. This is an aggression too. When, when you have a legislature that is trying to take away rights from people, that's, that's violence, that's aggression. The, when you have a government that says that it's okay to discriminate against LGBTQ people, then people go ahead and discriminate against on, on the street because you are giving them permission to attack us. You're giving them permission to make us feel inferior and that they are superior to us and they can, they can do whatever they want to us because the government is allowing it. The government is giving you permission to do whatever you want with us. In many ways, those people say, I don't think you're any less and I don't want anything to happen to you, but my religious convictions and beliefs 
say that that is wrong. Wrong to be gay, wrong to be transgender. That, that is hypocrisy. Because if you really think that you are not less than, you don't take away rights from people. Because giving me, giving me or an LGBTQ person a, their rights, it's not gonna take your rights as a straight person. It's not. It's only giving me the same rights that you have. And, and that's, that's what the Constitution tells you, that we are all equal under the law and that the dignity of everyone is, it cannot be violated. So uh, you can have your religious beliefs and if you don't want to marry a person of your same sex, you don't marry them. But you don't take away that right from another person that wants to marry a person that they love. You know, and it, it's the same thing that if, if you want to change your name, you go and you change your name and nothing happens because that's okay. But if you want to, to change your gender marker, then that's a problem. Why? Does it affect you? It doesn't affect you. It's my life if I'm a trans person. So why do you want to take my right, the, the same right that you have to change your birth certificate as you like, to do the same with mine if I'm a trans person? So it, you can have your religious beliefs, but the religious beliefs are personal, are, are to live in your private life. You cannot expose or impose your religious beliefs on other people because that's the way you live but it, it doesn't have to be the way that i live mm. and and in 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 government and with the rights of people it has to be equal for everyone you have the the right to believe or the right to not believe and the right to live your life as you choose and to love the person that you want to love and to live your identity as you are so uh, and, and above all things, you know, I was raised Catholic and the God that I know is a God of love and acceptance and inclusion. It's not a, a God of judgment or exclusion or hatred. So, it, and, and it's, it's, we need to love one another. That's the only thing. And I think this, this horrible crime of Alexa, what has shown us is that trans people are human beings that deserve to be treated with dignity, with respect, with equality, and that they have to have the same opportunities that the rest of us have. You know, we're not asking for anything more for, for, for trans people or special rights. We're asking for equal rights, for people to be treated the same, and for people to have the same opportunities as everyone else. The discrimination against trans people is so overwhelming that more than 40% of trans people have attempted suicide. When you put that into the context of people, uh, of the general population, only 0.03% of the general population has attempted suicide. That tells you the amount of violence and discrimination and harassment and bullying that trans people live every day. You know, the, every person question their existence at every moment. Imagine if you're walking down the street and they're questioning your humanity or your existence, or your identity, or your, even your dignity. And people just by looking at you think that you are not worth it and you shouldn't be alive. That's what trans people live every single day. Uh, do you know how many trans people live on the island of Puerto Rico? Unfortunately, we don't have statistics. And that's one of the things that, that is uh, critical that we get government to start counting trans people and counting LGBTQ people, you need to ask questions about sexual orientation and gender identity. Because if we are not in the statistics, then services are not given to us and, and things are not provided for us. You and I both know that the government has a lot of work to do on a lot of fronts. So is this a place where you guys can get involved and do a count? You know, because there are some wonderful nonprofits. You know, we're sitting in an office that is in San Juan that, that caters to and takes care of elderly members of the LGBT community. Is, is this something you guys could do to sort of amass that, you know? We, we can try, but it's never gonna be enough because it's the government uh, responsibility to do that count because w when you do a budget, a government budget, you have to take into account what are the statistics of the population that you're gonna serve. So that's their responsibility. We can do something and we have done. For example, we have done the National Transgender Discrimination Survey that it was uh, in the US and the territories, including Puerto Rico. And that accounted for the experiences of people, but it was voluntary, you know? The census is mostly 
almost obligatory and, and, and it, it goes to everybody. Mm -hmm. So the census is the place where we can be counted. Right. Uh, um, as much as we talk about the problems that exist here, there are some successes mm -hmm. in that Puerto Rico ranks fairly high mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, how should I describe it, LGBTQ rights policies. And rights policies. policies. Tell, tell us more about that. Uh, there was a study that was done uh, to uh, assess all the non-discrimination and uh, rights for uh, that are laws and policies in place in the uh, all 50 states and the territories of the United States. And Puerto Rico ranks number 20 out of 56 territories and states in terms of the advancement of LGBT rights in, in, in the U.S. And, and the territories. That's great. So it is great. That's great. And, and that dispels a myth that the Latino community or the Puerto Rican community is more homophobic or more transphobic mm -hmm. than other parts of the, of the United States or the territories. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the myths. And even, even we believe that sometimes, that we think that we are uh, less advanced than other parts. And no, we need to be proud of the history of struggle in Puerto Rico that has led to be number 20. And we're, we're an example, not only to the United States and the territories, but we're an example to the world that a very small territory has done so much with so little because we don't have the resources in other places. We have to deal with a very organized uh, religious fundamentalist sector that is every single day mm. uh, saying these hateful rhetoric things mm. in, uh, against us and, and we have overcome that and we are far more advanced than other places. You got it because you fought for it. That's right. You got it because you fought for it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.